Hi, welcome to the Call Within podcast. I'm your host, Amy Hogan. I'm a life coach, retreat leader, and breathwork facilitator who is here to support you in taking consistent action on your dreams to live a life of meaning and pleasure. I'll share with you insights, tools, and stories to help you answer the call within. Let the adventure begin. Hello, it's so good to be with you today. Welcome to episode seven, getting to know your fear. In our last episode with Taylor May Dean, she said, don't let your fear stop you from experiencing something that could be really beneficial. And one of the questions posed at the end of that episode for further exploration is, what is your fear stopping you from? So today we're going to talk a bit more about fear and how to sort of be in relationship with it so it's not so scary and overwhelming. If you've done any sort of personal development work, you might have heard different names for your fear, such as survival mechanism, saboteur, or ego. Now, its goal is to keep you safe. It wants you to stay safe and sound and all cozy inside your comfort zone. Because going outside of that and venturing into the unknown is really scary. It may even feel life-threatening at times. It's risky and vulnerable. We worry about what other people might think of us. Are we going to look stupid? What if we fail? One of the really annoying things about fear is that it's not going away. Have you ever noticed that? You take one leap and do something really scary and then you feel so relieved. Wow, I did it. Awesome. I had the job interview. I made all my points and I'm so proud of myself. And then you get a call for the second interview and your fear is right there again, telling you all the reasons that this won't work out. No matter how often you go outside your comfort zone, fear is along for the ride. And I think on some level, it's always going to be there. So if it's always going to be there, you might as well learn how to talk to it, get to know it and find out what it really wants. All right, so let's talk about getting to know your fear. Strategy number one, have a what for. One of the things I like to presence myself to before doing something scary, like starting this podcast or telling someone what's been on my mind, reaching out to a new friend or being really honest in a conversation is to remind myself why I'm even doing this. What is it for? What do I see to be on the other side of the fear? So ask yourself that same question before you're about to take a leap. What is it for? It's going to be a lot more supportive if it's something that really tugs at those heartstrings. Like there's something you really want over there on the other side. For example, a client was telling me the other day how their life is going, how lonely and lost they feel. They're retired, single, and wanting to date again and find a bit of a purpose in their life. They want to put themselves out there, but they're so aware of their fear and how it was stopping them. Then we took some time to get really present to what they wanted, to the life that they saw for themselves, the types of experiences and adventures they wanted to have. And it was sort of like this little crack in the darkness, you know, like they could see what was on the other side. I find it helps if you can make the what for really simple. So as I'm having interviews for this podcast with people I don't know, I can easily tell myself how stupid it all is and what's the point. And then I come back to my what for. I'm here to have fun and interesting conversations with people about their lives, to be inspired and connected through their stories. It helps to remind myself of that when things feel totally uncomfortable. And uh, it's actually sort of grounding too right now to even say that out loud to you. Strategy number two, give your fear a face and a name. Give your fear, survival mechanism, or saboteur a bit of a personality. Picture what it might look like. 
give it a name or a funny voice. I will sometimes picture mine to look like the Lorax from Dr. Seuss. You know that short orange man with like the giant mustache? By doing this, it it also kind of makes it be like something outside of yourself. Gives you a bit of a distance from it and has it feel less all-consuming. In my coach training program, we named our survival mechanisms, and one of mine was called the Righteous Rebel. It was that voice that put everyone else down, listing off all the reasons I was better or the reasons I couldn't connect with others, the reasons I didn't belong in that room. It was all their fault, and I got to sit up on my pedestal looking down from a place of self-righteousness and moral superiority. When you dive in a little bit deeper, you can see that that's just sort of like a front or a protection, you know, like it comes from a place of not feeling good enough or worrying about what others might think. That's the voice of fear. It wants to keep you safe. You know, don't go out there. Don't do anything risky. It's better to just stay where you are. By picturing it and giving it a name that makes you laugh, it's kind of like, oh, there's that little voice again doing what it does. It can really take some of that heaviness off. Strategy number three, let it have its moment in the sun. We all want to be seen and heard, and that is exactly what your fear wants too. So instead of not listening to it or pushing it down or dismissing it, let it have its say. Put it front and center on stage. Say out loud to yourself all the things it's saying to you or write it down on a piece of paper in your journal. Keep doing that until the fear no longer has anything to say or it starts repeating itself saying the same things over and over. Your fear loves to be indulged, so it can be a bit of a slippery slope if you spend too much time focusing on it. So let it say its piece, hear it out, thank it for coming out, and then get down to business. Sometimes I'll picture putting mine in the trunk of the car or the back seat. It's like, sure, you can come on this road trip, but you're not driving or sitting next to me, you're too distracting. So these are some ways to get friendly with your fear. Have a what for, give it a face and a name, and let it have its moment in the sun. The job of your fear is really to protect you. It loves you and wants to keep you safe. Acknowledge it, thank it, and tell it to go hang out somewhere else for a while while you keep focusing on what has you feel alive, empowered, and taken care of. Thanks for listening. See you next time.